All right, we're going to talk about formulas. We're in Al Grosch's book, Developmental Math 2. Formulas are used in the real world for a lot of things around your home, um, in business. We've got some formulas here for cost, markup, sale price, interest. These are business formulas. And then further on down, we have some formulas for geometry, perimeter, and area of a rectangle, triangle, and similar. Most of these you're going to want to memorize because you're going to have to use them in word problems, your midterm and your final. I would say these are the important ones. Make sure you memorize. You should be able to use all of them, though. So we're going to look at the first question. Find the perimeter of a rectangle given that the length is 12 feet and the width is 10 feet. All right, we're, being, we're talking about perimeter of a rectangle, so we're going to use the perimeter formula from up here. And I'm going to give myself a little more room here. The, the formula for perimeter of a rectangle is P equals 2L plus 2W. That's the formula, so that's how we're going to start. And then we look at what information we know. We know the length is 12, so we're going to replace L with 12. And we know the width is 10, so we're going to replace the, the W with 10. So once we do that, we should be able to then simplify. So the perimeter equals 2 times the length. Well, the length is 12, plus 2 times the width, and the width is 10. And now we can just simplify. 2 times 12 is 24. 2 times 10 is 20. When we add the 20 and the 24, we get a perimeter of 44. The units we're working with are feet. So 44 feet. I don't know what happened to number two. We're going from one to three. Number two is someplace lost in the twilight zone. I have no idea. Find the length of a rectangle given that the perimeter is 100 feet and the width is 15 feet. So again, we're looking, we're working with perimeter of a rectangle here. So we're going to use the same formula. Perimeter is 2 times the length plus 2 times the width, but this time we have different information. We know that the perimeter of this rectangle is 100 feet, so this time I'm replacing P with 100. The rest of the information says the width is 5 feet. So we're going to replace W, no, the width is what? 15 feet. We'll replace W with 15. So we don't know the length, so we have to leave L in. The width is 15. So we can again start simplifying. 100 equals 2L plus 2 times 15 is 30. So we're looking at this as an equation. We're trying to solve for L. We're trying to find the length. That's what the question asks us to do. So we're going to undo or isolate this L. So the first thing we have to undo is this plus 30. So subtract 30 from both sides. That gives us 70 equals, oh, these cancel, 2L. And then to isolate this L, we have to divide off this 2. So divide by 2, and we get L equals 35. So the length of this rectangle is 35, and I believe the units, again, are feet for this question. On the next page, we have solving a formula for a specific variable. Uh, this is retail, let's see, retail price equals cost plus markup. That's what this formula is. The directions ask us to solve for M. Um, the R and the C aren't going to go away. To solve for M, we're just going to isolate the M. The R and the C will end up being on the other side of the equation, but that's okay. So let's, let's rewrite this. R equals C plus M. We're going to solve for M, which means we're isolating this M, so we have to subtract the C from both sides. Those cancel, and we have M by itself. Now, you got to be careful over here because the R and the C, they're not like terms. So you can't put them together as one term. They're not like terms. So you're just going to list it as R minus C. Then you isolated the M, 
it's all by itself over here, so you have solved for m. m equals r minus c. And all I did was take this and rewrite it a different way. So number two asks us to solve for r. This is the interest, the simple interest formula. Interest equals principal times rate times time. So we're going to isolate this r. Interest equals principal times rate times time. To isolate this r, we undo this p and this t. And the operation here is multiply. So to undo it, we divide. Divide off the p, divide off the t. You can do it all in one step. And they will reduce like that, leaving your r by itself. But of course, anything you do on this side, you also have to do on this side. So we'll divide by p and t. Uh, if we could simplify this, we would, but there's nothing here to simplify. It doesn't reduce. So we have i over pt equals r. And we solve for r. Solving for a variable just means to isolate that variable. So use whatever, whatever operations you need and undo what's happening. All right, this is the formula for volume of a cylinder. Volume equals pi times r squared and r's radius times h, which is height. Solve for h, so we're going to isolate this h. And again, I'm going to rewrite this formula. V equals pi times r squared times h. I want to isolate this h because the directions say solve for h. So I have to undo multiply, and I'm going to use divide to get rid of the variables I don't want, pi and r squared. Whatever I do that on that side, I also have to do on this other side. And then we can just reduce the pi, reduce the r squared, and we have h by itself. And over here on the left, v over pi r squared. And you have solve for h by isolating that h. All right, on page 65, we're going to do the same thing, except this time we're just solving random equations for specific variables. These are not formulas. They're just random equations created by the author of the book. Um, we're doing the same thing. Whenever you're trying to solve for a specific variable, all you do is, just like solving an equation, you isolate that variable. You use opposite operations to undo everything that's happening to the variable you're being asked to solve. This one says solve for z. And here's the equation, x equals negative 5u minus 4z. And the explanation is all here, but I think it's better if we do it. So we're going to zoom a little bit, and we're going to rewrite the steps over here so we can do it ourselves. So the formula, the equation we're working with is x equals negative 5u minus 4z. And the directions tell us to solve for z. So first identify where is z, it's right there. When you're solving for z, you first get rid of any other terms. So we need to get rid of this negative 5u first. It's negative, so we'll add 5u. Both sides of the equal sign. This positive and negative 5u cancel each other. And we're left on the right with negative 4z. There's our equal sign. On the left here, these are not like terms. So just like we said before, we can't put these into the same term. We can't add them. They're not like terms. So we're just going to list them as x plus 5u. Now we need to get rid of this negative 4 off of the z because we're trying to isolate the z. So we're going to divide by negative 4. And that will cause those to cancel. And z is now left by itself over here. But if you do that, you have to divide by negative 4 over here. And this is where sometimes this process can get a little tricky uh, because it's generally in math and algebra, we don't like to leave a negative term here in the denominator. It's not considered simplified. So we're going to separate this into two terms, and we're going to find out what each term should be, whether negative or positive, and get that negative out of the denominator. So first, working with the x, this is a positive 1x, divided by a negative 4 makes negative x over 4. That's x. There we go. That's the first term. The second term is also a positive divided by a negative. So it is going to come out to be negative 5u over 4. 
And you can see that's the same thing the author has written down here. So I think we have a couple of examples down here. Okay. Solve for x in w equals 2x plus 4z. So here's the x in this term. Maybe it would be helpful if we write the whole thing over. w equals 2x plus 4z. All right, the x is here. We get rid of the other term first. So this is a positive 4z, so we subtract 4z, both sides. That makes it cancel on the right, and we have just 2x left over here. On the left, you can't subtract these. They're not like terms. So you're just listing them out individually as w minus 4z. Now to isolate this x, divide by 2. Both sides divide by 2. All right, this is actually an OK answer here, but we're going to separate it into two, two terms like we did before above so you can see what happens. The first term is w. We don't have to worry about the negative in the denominator this time, so this is just going to be w divided by 2 minus... 4z divided by 2, but now this causes us another issue that this, this term can be reduced because 4 reduces with 2. So let's write it again. w divided by 2 minus 4 divided by 2 is 2, so this is just 2z. And this is a good answer here. I think we have another example here. Solve for B. Where is the B? The B is right here. So let's write this again. 6A equals negative 3B plus 4C. All right, we're trying to isolate this B, which means we get rid of the other term first. So to get rid of this positive 4C, we'll subtract 4C both sides. That will cancel on the right, and we have negative 3b left. On the left, remember, you're trying to subtract these and they're not like terms. So we're just going to have 6a minus 4c. Now to separate this b from this negative 3, to isolate, we have to divide by negative 3. And so we do that on both sides, and again, that will isolate your B, but it leaves us with this dilemma of the negative in the denominator again, so we're going to separate this into two terms. So six positive 6A divided by negative 3 is going to make negative 6A over 3, which can reduce, and we'll reduce it in a minute. Negative 4C divided by negative 3 makes positive, negative divided by negative, 4c divided by 3, and that's going to be equal to your b over here. All right, now we need to reduce this. You have negative 6 divided by positive 3 makes a negative 2. So we have negative 2a plus 4c over 3 equals b. And there we go. We isolated that b there. 